Yes, we do. Thank you, David. <clears throat> okay, I have uh, six o'clock. I would like to call the uh, January 11th, 2022 uh, regular governing board meeting of CV Fiber to order. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Um, I don't have the agenda in front of me, but if it's not on there, um, there was this uh, bit about updating our towns for a town meeting on um, CV fiber plans, and I didn't know if it's on there, but I'd like it to be if it's not. Thanks, David. Yes, it's a, it's called an item called Town Communications Reports and ARPA Funds. We will definitely be uh, covering that tonight. That's something that lots of lots of folks want to talk about. So thank you. Any anything else? John. Um, I see there are uh, two items near or one item near the end of the agenda that uh, says possible executive session. I'm wondering if we could switch that around with the election of chair because I'll have to leave the meeting when you go into that executive session. Uh, possibly. I mean, I, I just put that at the end just to make it make the transition easier so that if we do elect a new chair, it you know, it's not half and half or part and part. Um, we could put the election of chair right at the beginning of the agenda, Jerry, and we could just knock that out right away and I could just uh, hand over the reins. If you have, do you have a preference? On, I'm on mute, first of all. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, you know, I'm, I'm actually not sure that the WEC discussion is going to go into executive session uh, because there's a meeting tomorrow um, with WEC, and I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that there's, uh, you know. Uh, uh, so much additional additional uh, information that's going to drive us into executive session. David, what do you think about that? No, I think it's mostly an update. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds sounds like if we uh, if it does look like we're going to go into executive session, we'll uh, we'll sit on it, do that, and then come and do the executive session right at the very end to accommodate. Thank you. <clears throat> no problem. Thank you. Um, okay, not hearing anything else. Uh, is there any public comment uh, items that are not on the agenda? I do not have anybody here in this uh, spacious place. <laughs> Rather cold outside, as you might have noticed, so not <laughs> folks aren't motivated to show up here for sure. All right, moving along, uh, meeting minutes approval. Jeremy, we have some meeting minutes to approve. Yeah, that would be the meeting minutes. Uh, so motion to approve the, the minutes of the uh, December 16th, 2021 meeting minutes as drafted. Second. Okay, moved by Jeremy, seconded by Siobhan. Any further discussion? Any objections to the motion? Motion passes unanimously. Uh, thank you very much. Um, no other meeting minutes. Let's move on to Treasurer's report. Treasurer, what do you have for us? Okay, I'm here to report that the uh, uh, ending cash balance uh, is $870,212. That's uh, essentially all grant funds, most of it for pre-construction um, and, and about 28 thousand for uh, general support, uh, which also includes grant funds. Uh, in the last month, we've spent about uh, nine, just under $90,000, basically, uh, for poll inventory and high-level design and um, the end of the project manager. Sounds good. Any, any questions for Phil? Uh, Phil, would you go over the 680000 spent on high-level design? No, no. Uh, about uh, 44000 45000 spent on high-level high design. So okay, there was a... $70,000 ending cash balance of just under $90,000 spent in the last month. 
and most of that's for uh, pole inventory and high level design. Okay, thank you. Thanks, RD. Anything else for Phil? Okay, great. Thanks, Phil. Uh, moving along, uh, clerk's report. Anything to report, Jeremy? Nope, I've been keeping up with the minutes. Um, I also have been collecting the, uh, the yeah, uh, yeah. I've been working on some stuff, but nothing really to report, uh, mostly just minutes, and then also trying to get the agendas in a single folder as well. All right, sounds good. Thanks for that. Um, project manager's report, Gary? Yeah, so we're, uh, we're moving along on multiple fronts here. Uh, we've, we are completing area A, uh, the five towns of area A, we're, we're uh, finish, finishing up the poll inventories there. We're awaiting a hard drive from Tilson. David, you haven't received the hard drive from Tilson yet, have you? No. We're awaiting the hard drive from Tilson. Um, we're also awaiting invoices from Tilson too, by the way. Um, and we have uh, Apex is out there right now uh, finishing up the, the work in Callus, and we expect that to be done weather permitting uh, within the next couple of weeks. And then, of course, we're moving into uh, areas B and C, and we have some uh, work orders uh, that have been approved and, and, and are, we're ready to go with uh, notice to proceed. Over the next couple of days, we'll send out notice to proceed to the two firms, Tilson and Apex, that are divvying up the 12 towns that are that are going to be in area area B and C. Uh, we also have ongoing our high level design um, that is approximately let's call it 85 percent complete. Perhaps um, they uh, have run over on time. We were supposed to be finished at the end of the calendar year. They're now asking for mid-February for a finalization date. Uh, some of us aren't pleased with that. We'd like them to perhaps be finished at the end of the month, this month, which would be more convenient for us in our workings with NRTC. Uh, David has been, been uh, in contact with them on that. Uh, that, of course, is paid by grants, but we have the extension for that grant, which brings us out into June. So we have no problem. We really shouldn't be worried about the money to pay for that. Also, um, the poll inventory for Orange is also in uh, one of those similar grants, but we have the extension out into June. So we're not, we're not, we're not concerned about the grant funding uh, following, up, following up on that. Uh, I think I'll let, um, I'll, I'll let Ray talk about the what what we're doing with uh, RTC and Waitsfield Telecom, I'll let that fall over into the uh, operator negotiations and the EPP. Uh, so unless there are any questions, I uh, I think I'm I, I've laid it out. Okay. Any questions for Jerry? Sounds um, good. Jer uh, Go ahead, uh, Jeremy. Um, uh, Jeremy. Uh, 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 Jerry, in um, uh, areas uh, B and C, can you break out area C? Um, if not tonight, uh, can you break it out and, and send it to me uh, by email? I would be interested to know uh, where we stand in area C and whether it's Tilson who's going to be doing the um, for whom the work orders have been issued in Area C. In other words, who's going to be who's going to be doing cabin, and uh, and uh, and when is there a timeline for that? I, I could I could yes I'll, I'll I'll get that to you RD I could okay. I could look it up right now, um, but I don't want to hold up the whole the whole group. Got it. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> Thanks RD and. Jerry, um, not hearing anything else or seeing any hands up. Um, let's move along to public use of CV Fiber internal email lists. Chuck, I believe this is yours. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, <clears throat> if you recall, uh, a number of board meetings ago, 
we had voted as a board to allow the public to email our uh, email lists that we use for um, internal communications and, and things of that nature. Um, and the reason for that at the time was that it was rather difficult to for the public to actually get in contact with a specific uh, committee if they wanted to do so. Um, the, now, uh, since that has happened, we've had a couple of things occur. Uh, the first thing to occur is that uh, we have had uh, a couple of instances of some people replying all that we would really like to not be able to uh, email those groups um, in, in that kind of capacity. Um, the other thing is we have enhanced our website such that the contact page on our website now has the ability to reach out to specific community uh, co committees directly. Um, so if you want to reach the, the communications committee, you want to reach the planning and development committee, you can do that right on our website. Uh, we also added the ability to reach each town's delegation. Um, so if you want to reach just the Northfield delegation or just the Berlin delegation, you, you can do so. Um, and so between both of those things happening, uh, the communications committee brought up the topic of whether we thought it was appropriate for those email lists to actually be publicly accessible. And consensus across the communications committee was that we think we should make them uh, for internal use only once again. And the reason for that uh, is uh, one, it will prevent external third party spammers from be being able to send messages to those groups, uh, which is good for security measures. Uh, and two, it will prevent any communications that do include third parties. Uh, it will prevent them from replying all uh, when we may not want to do so, in particular when we're warning meetings. Um, so that is the, the current thinking on that. Uh, before I put any sort of motion uh, forward uh, to the table, um, I would just want to kind of stop and take the temperature of folks and, and see if there's anybody who drastically disagrees with that viewpoint and would like to argue for keeping those email lists open. Right, so, uh, Jeremy, you have your hand up. David? Yeah, so um, I think that that's a very good idea uh, to close those lists. I don't think that we need to um, have those available to the public. Um, the other thing that kind of goes hand in hand along that with that are the Google groups. Behind you? I've gotten a, a number of emails that have ended up no, in my spam box. Uh, whoever John Jeff is, can you please mute when you're talking about your power cord? Um, okay, so at any rate, um, I think that we should get rid of the Google Groups because they, when someone sends email to the Google Groups versions of our CV Fiber Groups, uh, it ends up in my spam folder, so that's just one other place to look for messages. Um, and then the other thing is, it's just more work for Chuck or whoever or myself to maintain two redundant sets of groups. So I think that the Google Groups should be completely closed down at this point. Thanks, Jeremy. David? You're unmuted. You're muted. You're, muted. You're not talking about taking away the contact on the website. Because I have to tell you, I've gotten three emails from the website. No, no, the, the idea is uh, now that we have that contact on the website, um, keeping those email lists as publicly accessible uh, is relatively redundant. Um, we will still keep the town-based aliases up. So, uh, you know, uh, callus at cbfiber.net will still be a, an email address that is publicly accessible that anybody can use to email their callus delegation uh, and, and so forth. So we are going to keep those live. Uh, and in fact, those are part of the mechanism by which the website uh, operates. Uh, such that you know we only have to update one place rather than updating multiple places should delegates turn over. Yeah, I, I think this is a great idea. I mean, it, I, I think this is um, going to be the, I think it sounds like the least amount of work and kind of the most amount of benefit. We still have distribution lists for folks to contact and we don't run into all of the other side effects of the way we have it set up currently. So yeah, I think, I think we should do this. Any any other thoughts? 
one way or the other. So uh, why don't you go ahead and make your motion, Chuck? Great. Uh, I hereby move that we make our email lists for internal use only. Um, Actually, let me clarify that a, li uh, a little bit. I, I hereby move that we make our committee-based email lists uh, for internal use only. Second. Second. OK. Moved by Chuck, seconded by Siobhan. Any further discussion? Damn it. <laughs> we can <laughs> and so let's sort this, uh, this one out, and then maybe we can actually, uh, we'll have another one to um, get away from the public notice list on the Google Groups, but first for this one, for the internal committee mailing lists. Um, yep. So I'll, I'll go ahead and make a second motion um, that uh, no. we... Most of this motion no, first. I kind of vote. Oh, okay, yep, I'm yeah. sorry. All right, so <clears throat> are there any objections to adopting the motion that Chuck made? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. You were saying, Mr. Burt? Yes, uh, I want to call out before I make this motion that there's actually two elements of this. One, there is the committee mailing lists that we have on Google Groups, and that is incredibly clear cut for us to go ahead and retire those and just move to using the internal uh, at CV Fiber uh, uh, lists for committee mailings. However, the public notice list is a little bit more complicated uh, as um, Microsoft does not support creating a large scale list like that in quite the same way that Google Groups does. Uh, so that one I would actually propose uh, we maybe table um, and have uh, some more research done by the communications committee to come back with some proposals on, on how we handle that. But in the meantime, I will at least go ahead and make the clear cut motion of, uh, I hereby move that we deprecate our Google Groups committee and board email lists in favor of the at CV Fiber comparable lists uh, that we now have in place. Second. Second. Great, Jeremy got that one. Moved ah. by Chuck, seconded by Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gotta have fun somehow. <laughs> that's right. So we, we live in a cold place. We have to make it make it warm, right? Um, any further <laughs> discussion on this? Any objections to the motion? All right, motion passes unanimously. And so Chuck, if you wanna just uh, kind of noodle around and see if you can find a way that makes sense, that we can do that all within Teams and we'll, we'll figure it out down the road. Sounds good, thank you. All right. Um, okay, uh, next one is Elmore, CV Fiber and Lamoille FiberNet. Uh, Ray. Uh, me. I see Ray has his hand up. Chuck, I think it's probably, I just checked the cvfiber.net and the all the committees have Google Groups as their email list. Can we uh, go in and change all those? Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. All right, yes, David. So, Elmore. Elmore is now officially part of Lamoille. Fiber, uh, what are they called? They got a I unique know. name. They got a, forget their new name. Anyway, they have agreed to take on Elmore, and they have respectfully asked us not to do a poll inventory and um, not exactly sure what we do with the money we got for that at this moment. But so they are they are going to be actually a split CUD. They're going to be 89 percent Lamoille and 10 percent NEK broadband. They're splitting the town up based on what you ut electric utility services that part of town so that's how they ended up doing that so i don't know if there's any formal thing they've never formally requested to leave cv fiber and whether that needs to be done or not jeremy i don't know if you know the answer to that yes they need to formally the select board needs to formally request to leave and it's in statute the process okay so i'll, I'll, work on, I'll connect with them <clears throat> yeah so I mean, it, it's it, it should it's basically the same process, um, but because we haven't essentially we haven't invested any money there, it's a rather simpler process than if we'd already, um, you know, yeah. you know, put in the structure. Uh, Jerry, you had your hand up. Do you still have a question or something to add? Uh, I just wanted to talk about the form formal aspect of this, but you covered it. Thank you, Jeremy. 
Yeah. Thanks, Jerry. Linda? Hey, David, did you hear anything about Waterbury? No. I haven't heard anything either. Okay, thank you. So, um, Lamoille Fibernet, uh, you, you had talked to them at some point, Linda, right? Right. Yeah, we sent our paperwork over. The select board signed the paperwork and everything. It went over uh, way before Christmas, way before. You, you may want to drop Val, whatever Val's last name is, an email. If you don't have it, I can send it to you. Uh, I think I have it. Yeah. I just, just expected to hear a response one way or the other. It, they they seem, yeah, <laughs> they need to be prodded. <laughs> oh, okay, thanks, David. Lot, lots of stuff moving right now, so that's not uh, not so so surprising, especially because they're they're not. I don't think they're as far along as we are. Um, but that I think, in terms of the of the funding that we've looked at uh, or that we've gotten and the formula, um, if Waterbury does go partially with Lomel Fibernet, that that formula has to change then, right, David? Or, or are they locked in? They're, at this point, they're still in our. Um, in our in our, uh, <laughs> we're getting credit for the 289 locations. Okay. Well, I guess that's good, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So we'll uh, we'll st stay tuned with that. Um, okay. Anything else on Elmore? Great. Moving along. Uh, executive director position. I'm not sure who's taking this on. Ray, maybe? I don't think Jerry or David. Yeah, this Hi, is Ray. Jerry. We can start it, but I see Linda has her hand up. Linda, you have something? She had her hand up before. Oh, okay. And you, now you're on mute. So we, uh, we're, we're, we're moving forward with the uh, executive director position. The There's been a, a working group that has pulled together um, a job posting and has been working with the uh, executive committee. I believe David is going to uh, to bring up a motion shortly. Um, our intention is by early April, hopefully, to have someone on board, maybe earlier. Um, and we uh, we are a small. There's a there's a group of about seven of us or six of us, I believe that are going to go through the process of, of looking through resumes and, and, and doing the interviews and checking the references and, and doing, doing all of that uh, follow-up work. Um, okay. And we, um, the, uh, David's, gonna, David's gonna make the motion now, but I, I, I do want folks uh, to know, and I, this, is, this, is, this is totally my fault. Uh, we put a posting out on LinkedIn, uh, last night, two nights ago, um, in, in advance, got our meetings crossed, got my meetings crossed up. So I apologize for that. Um, so I also apologize to everybody that got all that spam until we figured out how to turn that off. What a mess that was, but we got that under control. Um, but we're, we're, we're really looking forward to doing this because the, uh, the, the workload on the uh, volunteer folks is, 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 is brutal at the moment uh, and we need to do it. So uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting somebody on board. I'll pass it over to David to uh, close the loop on this. So did my motion get pasted into the chat? Yes. Okay. Anyway, so the motion is whereas CV Fiber requires a full-time executive director to be responsible for carrying out strategies and objectives for the successful development in operation of the CV Fiber Community Network with contracted partners, engage and collaborate with community members and other communication union districts, utilities, organizations, and state government. Whereas the CV Fiber 2022 budget has a provision for the position of executive director, whereas CV Fiber has received a pre-construction grant award from the Vermont Community Broadband Board that would fund the position of executive director, moved that the executive committee recommend that the governing board approve the position of executive director and authorize the executive committee to publish a job announcement, manage the recruitment and interview process, and further make a recommendation to the board for the appointment of an executive director. Second. Second. 
Okay, so a quick point of order. This motion is written for the executive committee, David. This is not a governing board motion. It says move that the executive committee recommend. Yeah, yep, you're right. Yeah, so I'll modify that to um, recommend that the governing board approve. <laughs> OK, yeah, I'm I, I, I think we can. I think that was the kind of the prior step. Yeah, and so we just need to massage this. So now the governing board is actually taking action on this because the executive committee has already talked about this. We had a special meeting last Thursday. Um, this is something that we spent some time with. There's not really I mean, again, there's not really any surprises with this. This is kind of the next. The next logical step of we put it in the budget. We've talked about it. The ad's gone out. The ad's you know, being paid for. And so we're now authorizing the executive committee to actually go and do, right. do the process. And they'll come back. Um, with, they'll get feedback from the team. The executive committee will then recommend the uh, executive director, you know, hopeful appointee to the governing board. And the governing board, all of us here, will then uh, approve that when we get that far. Um, my my main question is: Do you uh, do you have a sense of a timeline? When when do you think we want to pull the trigger on a successful candidate? So, Jeremy, before we get into that, do we want to uh, fix the agenda or fix the uh, the motion and then yeah, figure out delete. a second for the minutes? Yeah, delete the the executive committee piece. Yes. Yeah, so okay. than... I, 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 I can fix that. So basically, the governing board authorizes the executive committee right. to do X, Y, Z in this. OK, so um, I second unless someone else, unless you heard someone else for uh, first for uh, for Christian in the minutes. No, that's that, that's fine with me. OK. Jeremy, there's a second section where it says executive committee farther down in that motion. Um, right. Yeah. So, so the governing board appoint approved the position, and so and so we're also authorizing the executive committee to do the job announcement, manage the recruitment and reprocess, and they will then come back with the recommendation. I think that's I think the clause. Yes. The executive committee <clears throat> recommend that. That's what the bit that struck and everything else is uh, everything else should remain the same. Yep. All right, so I'll I see. Um, OK, so that was you, Jeremy. I see Jerry, then Alan. Yeah, you had asked about a timeline, so we're 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 targeting early April or earlier, hopefully to have someone on board and we're thinking that sometime in the second half of February to close out um, the ex the uh, acceptance. I'm, I'm a little hesitant and I'm, I'm always willing to take uh, to take a, a commentary and help here. Uh, I'm a little hesitant to put a definitive date as of right now because we just don't know how things are looking and 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 what we're going to get. I think typically these things ramp up early and then peter out. Um, but I, I, I'm just a little hesitant to put a definitive closing date as of right now. But, but you know, we can we can, we can change that as we as we start thinking about it. We will want to make that announcement, and we'll also uh, I, while I'm on that, uh, we will need to modify the uh, the website so that the uh, it's not just RFPs, it's RFPs and job posting, and then we can provide that inf that kind of information. Uh, on the website, but that's a discussion for for offline uh, later on. I'll stop now. Thanks, Jerry. Uh, Jeremy, you still have your hand up. Did you have something you wanted to add? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've got 113 mostly spam responses to the LinkedIn ad. Uh, five of those actually followed our instructions and had and, and included a cover letter and a resume. So that's where that is. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. Uh, Alan Gilbert, did you have something? I saw you had your hand up briefly. Yeah, I did have my hand up, but you guys figured it out, so I don't need to say anything. OK, thanks, Alan. David? <laughs> yeah, I just want to suggest besides you know, doing our announcement in these various media 
links and stuff. Sometimes the best sources of people we know, and so you probably ought to be putting it out to anybody you know, or even putting it in Front Porch Forum, um, just to let people know that we're doing this, for one, and then if somebody in your community is qualified, all the better. Yeah, that would that would be great. Uh, Christopher. Yeah, on that same point that, that David just mentioned, I just wanted to, to sort of double down on that and say it's super easy on LinkedIn to just share it on your profile, um, which which I did as well, which will get it out to a lot more, a lot more people. Yep. So, uh, could, yeah, could somebody actually, I mean, if you haven't seen it, uh, seen the posting on LinkedIn, could somebody actually... Uh, paste in a link in the chat here, and maybe some you know folks who have LinkedIn accounts that uh, that they care about that they can then share that along. Yep, I'll do I'll, it. I'll grab the link and share it in the chat. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. Okay, so we have this. Um, so we ha we have the motion, right? Uh, any further discussion about this? All right. Any any objections to the motion? as uh, amended i don't hear any objections the motion passes uh unanimously thanks for that um moving on operator negotiations and uh, executable project plan so i guess i'll talk to that and, and jerry can jump in um as well as david so um we have been working on the operator um contract uh, we've had a couple of rounds now with our attorney with regard to that, and my expectation is that tomorrow we'll be sending that off to Waitsfield Telecom for them to kind of consume and process this uh, before they get back to us. Uh, the second part of that, the second part of that operator contract, uh, the, one of the exhibits has to do with the compensation package uh, for for an operator, and uh, that's still left for us to uh, uh, to parse and to learn more about. We have um, we have begun uh, discussions with uh, Mission Broadband. We have received their contract. We've passed it to our attorney. We've marked it up a significant amount, and we felt like we need really need to talk to them. Uh, they provide a, a lot of consulting services, and we need to get more concrete with regard to what they can do uh, and kind of reframe the contract into a, into a, uh, a retainer agreement with a various work orders where we where we identify the specific things we want to get done at, at a specific price. So we have a conversation with them tomorrow afternoon. That's uh, Jerry, myself, and uh, David. Friday, uh, the next bit has to do with the executable project plan. Friday, we have a three-hour session with NRTC uh, in the morning. And we'll have a couple more sessions next week of a similar uh, length. And it looks like we'll be doing um, uh, two to three sessions a week uh, ad infinitum uh, for the for the coming uh, month or so before we can get the executable project plan put to bed in a, into a certain position where we can make some uh, uh, start doing the initial project plan. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, Jerry, David, anything you want to add to that? Any questions for Ray or thoughts about operator executable project plan, anything like that? All right. Well, um, yeah. RD? Uh, Jeremy, um, uh, if we are anticipating of bringing an executive director on board um, sometime in the next few months, hopefully, um, I presume there's some way of, of integrating the executive director into these um, negotiations, these sessions with NRTC. I, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 absolutely. I mean, that 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 would be uh, that's actually part of the job description for the executive director is to basically to be the interface between the, the executive committee and all of the uh, contractors that will be working for us. It's quite a full-time job. Yeah, exactly. And is the, um, the <clears throat> is it, is there, is it an easy handoff from the executive committee, which is now 
essentially the interface? Is it going to be an easy handoff to an executive director? We're going to try to make it as, as smooth of a handoff as possible. I, I, I think that's part of the perhaps unstated criteria that would be that would be uh, used when we're evaluating uh, applicants is, you know, how smooth can a handoff be and, and how well do we think we can work with this applicant? Uh, that's, that's uh, I mean, maybe that is a stated criterion, but it, it's it's certainly something that'll be in the forefront of all of our minds when we're interviewing folks and reading resumes. Thank you. David? You're muted. The executable project plan is a living document, and the, to the extent that it becomes the Bible for CV Fiber and the contractors, it helps the executive director actually launch himself into the project. So I'm pretty excited. I think timing is probably pretty good. Very good. Thanks for that, David. Yeah, hope, hopefully, you know, we can make it as easy as possible for this you know, a new person to come in and hopefully they're capable enough to, you know, accept the baton and keep on running. Okay, anything else about uh, operator negotiations, executable project plan? We're looking at like a, a 7 p.m. finish line here, folks. This is this is great. Um, <laughs> right, uh, town communications reports and ARPA funds. Where are we at with all of that? So I think perhaps I raised this topic and um, you you should have all of you basically all of you should have received um, a work product that David and I put together for the town report uh, to submit to your board of selectmen that would have gone into the town meeting materials, uh, which how that's going to be held now, I have no idea. Uh, but I do understand that in some communities, they if you do, if you're meeting virtually, they'll mail it to you. So maybe they're going to see it anyway. So um, please do send that along. Yeah, hopefully you have done so already. There may be some deadlines um, for that. Uh, the other part is that we're looking at how we could um, engage uh, the residents in the different towns, uh, the Vermont. Community Broadband Board um, wants to know how we have engaged the residents in the town. Um, and so that's part of our construction grant application, for example. Uh, in addition to the front porch forum um, twice a month that we perhaps should be considering. The other is that we're looking at taking the town reports and emailing them to those who have subscribed to our newsletter or responded to our survey uh, by town in order to get them excited about what's coming up, as well as to make them aware of the ARPA funds that um, that we're going after from the state, as well as the availability of ARPA funds from the communities. And you may recall from the um, town report that was passed out, the, uh, the money that's, the money up to about a million and a half will be matched by the state. Uh, for so that's an additional million and a half that we perhaps you know because the towns were committing it that we were otherwise we're not going to get it, some sort of incentive uh, but beyond that we are committing to spending the money in the town so that we have that commitment as well so we're going to get back we're going to talk about this i think perhaps in the communications committee but i think that uh, we're going to start sending out sending that out i think david's already committed and wants to send it to the folks in callis um, and uh, we'll see how that goes. That could be our first experiment, see what kind of feedback we get. Um, anything else, uh, Jerry, David? I, I, I guess I just want to put out there that I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that those of you that are delegates or alternates, if you haven't already, that you have, please take taken this material and sent it to your town clerk um, and make sure that they know that it exists so that they can include it in the town report. If they haven't solicited it, solicited it act actively, um, I'm just going to ask each of you to make sure that you kind of drop it into their laps if you can. Uh, Linda. I did drop it into the select board in Waterbury's lap. 
Um, I also uh, got it into the Waterbury Town meeting report, and I sent out like a piecemeal of it to Front Porch Forum this week and got uh, several responses that were very positive about, oh, this is a great update. Uh, the ARPA funds, really, we needed to ask for them from our select board. Oh, maybe we should do that, that kind of response. So uh, I'm encouraging all members to do such. Thank you. Thanks, Linda. OK, anything uh, else? Jeremy? Yeah, RD, go for it. Just um, I, um, I've also been um, I submitted a report to my my town for the town report. Um, I had a December 7th deadline, but I'm sure that's I've sent in a modification and I'm sure that will be acceptable. Um, one of the things I've done on a separate track is approach the select board uh, for an ARPA donation uh, from their ARPA pot. Now, am I to, do I understand correctly that our ARPA donation from Cabot will be matched um, by a VCBB? Is that correct? And is it also correct that any money that we donate from our ARPA pot has to be spent in Cabot. Okay, yes. so both of, I see Ray nodding. And well, just just to make, make make sure we're clear, um, yeah, the the most money that CV Fiber is going to get is a million and a half to match. So if suddenly we had three million dollars worth of um, of contributions, uh, they still only match up to a million. They still only give us another million and a half, right? So okay. there's that. And will the money be spent in your town? The answer is yes. Okay, thank you. Those are two points that I haven't made to my select board because I wasn't um, I wasn't certain of them, and now I can make that that pitch again. Okay. There, there was one thing that has kept us from kind of closing the loop in all this, and that is that we don't have a uh, uh, an MOU uh, in a, in a yep. finished form, and one of the reasons for that was that we didn't have the final rules from Treasury. Those were mm -hmm. just promulgated, I think, earlier this week or the end of last week, so that they're now available. And I think that, that between the two or three, four attorneys that are looking at this, <laughs> we might be able to pull, pull something together uh, maybe by sometime next week. So I'll, okay. be them, I'll be poking them for that. Okay, so will, will I, um, will uh, delegates uh, uh, get um, copies of this MOU that we can present to our select board? The short answer will be yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, RD. Thanks, Ray. Uh, John Morris, I see you have your hand up. Uh, I just wanted to raise the point that the there's a deadline for the match of I think April fifteenth. Well, the, the the good news there, uh, John, is that um, as a result of some pressure, we managed to get that change to fifteen September. Oh, that's awesome. great news. Yeah. And we don't have to have the money in pocket. It just needs to be a letter of commitment. Great. Is that letter of commitment, is that, is that synonymous with the MOU, a letter of commitment? Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to go on a limb and say that that would be the same. I, I can't imagine that the towns would want anything less than uh, understanding the full uh, arrangement between the parties. And so um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't think so. What what the RFP says is a letter is a commitment. And so uh, maybe I think the commitment is the MOU and hopefully we'll have Vicuda and the attorneys figure that out between now and the next couple of weeks. OK, Alan. The other thing that might work is simple record of a vote by the select board to allocate the funds. I mean, that, that's what I got in Worcester, and, and I'll be using that as the proof that the town has agreed to allocate $50,000 to VARPA funds. And I'm sure that will, that will uh, meet things, RD. Got it. Yeah, my, my instinct is that we can get select boards to kind of soft commit to to yes, we're going to do this. And then what it actually, the actual shape of it, 
in the MOU later. I mean, whether they'll actually do that or not, I mean, I think it's going to depend on on the select board and their appetite for uh, uncertainty. But I mean, I think certain certain select boards are certainly more motivated than others to just get on with this. Uh, so I have Siobhan and then David. Yeah, the Orange Select Board is absolutely, they, they're ready to commit, they want to commit, they don't know how much, but they need a document, an official document requesting a specific amount of money so that they can say, yes, we'll do that, or they can consider it, so they can do their due diligence and determine, and then and then a document that makes that commitment, you know, so it's, it's that's that's where we are. They've been anxious for this since last June, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Maybe if Phil, maybe if Phil's here, we can talk to uh, talk to Bonnie about sending them an invoice. What do you think, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> maybe not just yet, but uh, David. Yeah, how many zeros will they have? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know that the Regional Planning Commission, Central Vermont Regional Commission, and and League of Cities and Towns has been going to a few towns, including the town of Woodbury, last week. Um, I tried to reach out to the two delegates from Woodbury, never heard back from them, but they have a formal application process and a formal committee that is making recommendations to the select board for a later vote. I don't know how many other towns are working it that way. It's something I know that CVRPC has been recommending. Um, I don't know how many other towns have done this. I know Callis has not done this. I was told in Callis we won't deal with opera until we get our town budget done, which is now. I mean, they're, they're, if they haven't finished the town budget, they're in trouble. But I have a feeling that's what's going on in a lot of towns is just getting the regular budgets completed for town meeting. Right. Any anything else on on this? Reporting to the towns, ARPA funds, et cetera. OK, moving along, um, let's talk some more about WEC, the agreement with WEC and our relationship with them. And if, we'll see if we need to go into an executive session, but it sounds like we probably don't. Yeah. So, Ray, do you want me to take it? <laughs> well, I heard you sighing, so I think. Yeah, no. I anyway, you... the, lo the long saga of working with WEC to get to an agreement. Anyway, so we met um, uh, 10 days ago to uh, restart what we're calling a restart process about how to go forward with the RUS loan that they're trying to get and how they can meet, meet their need, their commitment to make that thing work, as well as accommodate what the, uh, the, the, the three CUDs need to do, which is now we have money, how do we you know, best use the money and not borrow? So it's an ongoing discussion and the bottom line is that we have agreed in, in principle that we will provide whatever services they need for smart grid and, and smart metering in the context of an overall network that we're building. So tomorrow there's a, a second go round, hopefully making progress on this and setting up a time a time schedule by where they build where they would use their money uh, for construction between the three CUDs. It's clear that NEK Broadband needs all the money they can get, so they're willing to go first now. Well, we don't need WEX money at this point. Um, we will need it in probably year three. So that's where that is at, and I'll try to keep everybody posted the next time we, after this meeting. Ray, do you have anything else you want to add to, add to that? That no, sounds good. Yeah. All right. Any any questions about WEC? I mean, I I think what one of the one of the reasons that you know the shape of this changed, I think, is in part because they got a new um, head honcho. That first of all, and second of all, when we started talking to them, we didn't really have you know the bucket loads of money that we we are ending up with now. So um, <clears throat> as we started to make our plans some time ago. Um, we, or we ended up in different places, so it's um, yeah. I mean, not that much has changed, just in terms of which part goes first. Yep. So, all right. Anything else about WEC? 
Um, I'm just going to take a little bit of um, chair's privilege here and mention that um, even though we have the uh, Central Vermont Regional Planning uh, Committee room reserved here, it's incredibly likely that the legislature in the next week is going to allow municipalities to hold entirely remote meetings. So we may not actually have to have um, <laughs> Thank in -person you. Um, at least until the pandemic is declared over or I think it's actually maybe for the rest of this calendar year. I, I forget what the how the bill is worded, but um, in any event, <clears throat> we may not have to do this. The really the, the only thing that changes if we do all remote is that it must be recorded. So that's really the that's really the, the main difference. So um, the next the next agenda item is the election of the chair, which, as I mentioned in the December meeting, it was my intention to step aside and um, let someone else take the helm of this so that I can go back to doing my research and doing other work and spending more time with my kids and such. Um, Jerry did meet with the select board in December and they agreed to sort of swap the positions and make him the delegate and me the alternate. And so um, I will, um, I'd like to conduct an election of chair to replace me. So this is sort of weird. I'm, we don't, I don't think we have to go strict Robert's rules here, but because I'm not standing for the election, um, I'm happy to um, just conduct this. So can I take any nominations for chair of CV Fiber, David? I'll nominate Jerry Diamantides for a chair. Second. second. So Robert's rules says that you don't actually need seconds for nominations, but I will take a whole host of seconds. That sounds great. Uh, are there any, any other nominations? OK, not hearing any. Uh, Chuck, do you have a comment? Uh, no, I, I have a nomination. Uh, I, I'd like to nominate Siobhan. For chair. <laughs> I, I, I just want to make sure that the nomination is for chair. I respectfully decline. <laughs> Siobhan looks I, horrified. <laughs> I, I really appreciate that, Chuck. Thank you so much. But respectfully, really, I don't. I do not want this position. I have seen this position. I have looked into the abyss. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to give you the nod, Siobhan. Thank you. All right. Thanks do, for that, Chuck. Do we Chuck. have a position uh, of official seconder? <laughs> Well, well, she is the official second. She's the vice yes, chair. I, I was thinking it would save a lot of work if we just designated <laughs> Siobhan as the seconder. <laughs> we, we can just change it to, to rules. All right, uh, uh, Tom, I see you have, a, you have a comment. Your hands up. Yes, um, just wondering maybe this is where we're going next, but uh, if you could explain what the process is going to be by which we're going to, to do the election. Well, if um, because there are no there is are not multiple nominations, I will direct the clerk to cast one vote on behalf of the body. If there are if there are objections, there's not really a process for that because elections are just votes. It's not a yay or nay. It's not a motion in the same in the same sense. So you won't actually have to you won't actually have to do anything um, if you want somebody other than Jerry to be chair, you ought to nominate them. Literally right now would be the time. So th thanks for asking that, Tom. All right, are there any other nominations for chair? I'm about to close it. Okay, motions are closed. Um, I will direct our clerk to cast one vote on behalf of the body, <clears throat> declaring Jerry Diamantides chair of CV Fiber. There you go. Now you get to run the meeting, Jerry. And uh, so we have two more agenda items, and I will I will step back. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. A hard fought campaign. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, so how about if we uh, do this roundtable, and um, I'll take the uh, I'll start with my uh, chair privilege here to thank Jeremy. You know, to go from a concept, truly a, a concept with, with with a guy standing at the door with with a clipboard asking for signatures to get on the ballot at a town meeting to an organization with a multi-million dollar budget 
and a path forward that that has thousands of people excited is 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 it is an incredible feat. So uh, my round table is thank you, Jeremy. And uh, how about if I go around the room as I can see you, David? I am. I am. I want to thank Jeremy for all his hard work, and um, I'm sure he's going to be looking forward to seeing the f future success too. Chuck, you're next on my vis field of vision. Yes, here, here, Jeremy. Thank you for all you have done for us. We wouldn't be where we are today without your tireless efforts. So thank you. Tom Fisher. I think it's going to be a common refrain. Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I get you, of course, to everybody else who's been who's been working hard order? Really on these <laughs> various contracts and uh, projects in the field? Go ahead, Jeremy. Did, didn't we do all this in December once? Do we have do I have to go through this again? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. Siobhan, go ahead, please. I'm just really glad that we're progressing, that we're we're continuing to move on and 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 just really proud of all the work that we've all accomplished. Um, and as, as, you know, a whole bunch of really good worker bees. And I'm really glad that Jerry has taken this on, not in a small part because I'm glad I'm not feeling obligated to do it. <laughs> and, and, uh, because because I would and, and if nobody else would do it, I would feel obligated to step up and then there goes my quality of life. But Jerry, I don't think Jerry has the same personality flaws that I have. And so I think he's going to be able to maintain an even keel a little better than I could. But I'm very excited about where we're going and what we're doing. And I'm going to shut up now. Thanks. Alan, what would you like to say? So I'm a railroad guy, and um, I often think about railroad analogies uh, in something like this. We're not at promontory point yet where the two locomotives are cow catcher to cow catcher. But Jeremy, <laughs> you've really you've really you've really gotten us off on a great path in case the railroads, it was two different paths, but they did meet. Um, but the work you've done is, I think, equivalent to what Leland Stanford did for the Central Pacific Railroad and building <laughs> tunnels uh, through the uh, through the Sierras. So thanks. Thanks very much for that. Thanks for building fires <laughs> under us. And I hope you keep doing that. And Jerry, I wish you the very best. I know you're an incredibly capable guy and we're going to get there. I, I, I really feel this year especially is going to tell uh, tell the world that we can do this. So uh, best of luck in helping us prove that. And Jeremy, thank you again. Thanks, Alan. Didn't know you're a railroad guy. We're going to have to uh, have a sidebar about that someday. Yeah. Jeremy, Matt? Uh, yeah, thanks, Jeremy. Amazing work. Uh, but also, I just wanted to point out how well the whole board in general is now working together. You know, I, I remember one the first few meetings that I showed up to, they were just interminable. They went on and on and on and on and on and round and round the mulberry bush. And now we're like, we got this, we're done, you know, like what, an hour ahead of schedule? You know, this is great. So just thanks everyone for all the work that you put in. This is great. Uh, Chris, Shank? I, I, I was thinking that everybody was thinking Jeremy Matt. So I've been, you know, lost. In the <laughs> oh, you're um, <laughs> So that's good. I like yeah, that. So for, I mean, so first of all, I'd like to say yes. Thank you, thank you, Jeremy Hansen. Sorry, Jeremy <laughs> Matt, but sorry. Thank you, Jeremy Hansen. Um, I, you know, I've been here a short period of time, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, your yeah. leadership, you know, shows through. Um, second of all, Jerry, I've enjoyed working with you already, and I, I look forward to, to working with you more in the future. Um, and third of all, and for the second hour of this meeting, uh, no, I'm just kidding. That's it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Phil, would you, you have something, please? I'm just joining the uh, the course here. Uh, Jeremy, thank you for your, your hard work. It's uh, clear from when I first started, which really has been that long, uh, six, I don't know, is it six months, nine months, um, nine months. Um, 
and uh, it's 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 clear. I think I'm I'm really impressed where we're at as a volunteer board. It's it's quite amazing, and it's because of your leadership. Thank you, Ray. Yes, I wanted to point out uh, that we have an hour left to go on our agenda. So, Jeremy, just hang in there. <laughs> um, as, as as daunting as the work is in front of us, um, it, we know what's in front of us. We know the things that have to be done. Um, it, this is really uh, the end of the beginning. And we wouldn't be here but for Jeremy's work. It's harder, it's harder to get something start, started and have it quicken and have it actually take place than it is for us now to go forward. As hard as this is going to be, it's harder to get something started that's this monumental. A $50 million, 1,200 mile broadband network for 55,000 citizens in 20 communities, 21 communities in central Vermont. That's amazing. Thanks, Jeremy. Jeremy, Matt, do you have your hand up? Hmm. Yeah, I do actually. Real, just a real quick question. I just want to confirm that now that you are chair of the board, you are also chair of the executive committee. I, I believe that's correct. Okay, just wanted to double check that. Okay. Uh, let's see who who's who's next. Uh, David Lawrence. Um, I don't think there's much more that I can say uh, compared to what everybody else said. Uh, but I do want to just say on a personal level, as somebody who has been a remote internet worker in Middlesex since 1997, um, I um, I cannot really express the depths of my gratitude that somebody really took this bull by the horns <laughs> and, and made this, you know, uh, something that's really going to come true. So um, that's, I, I will always appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Feel, feel your pain, man. David, when? I'm just going to concur with what everyone said. Thank you, Jeremy and Jerry for stepping up and thank you all for your work. All right. Uh, Jonathan Williams. Uh, yes, hi everyone. Just uh, echoing everyone's sentiments, and uh, thank you very much, Jeremy and Jerry. Sure enough, Henry. How are you, Henry? Uh, yeah, I, I I really want to thank you, Jeremy, be, for um, you know the breadth of the skills that you brought to this, to create this thing, and the fact that you took it to the point where it, it could be launched on its own, and um, and that is, uh, you know, perfect time to step down. I think a combination of your technical skills, your management skills, and your leadership skills really combined to make you a, a great leader uh, for the group. And I'm. I hope that you'll still stay involved and impart wisdom to us as we proceed. And Jerry, um, thanks for taking over and continuing. And I see all of this as being rather seamless. Thanks yeah. again. Thanks, Henry. I, I I I do hope we continue moving in a as seamlessly as possible. RD, have I called on you yet? Not yet. No, I'm. I'm ch happy to chime in. I have. I'm personally grateful to Jeremy for throwing me a rope time after time to help me scale this incredibly steep learning curve. I feel I've gotten an education and uh, um, and a valuable one. And I'm personally very grateful to Jeremy for all the time he's given me. Thank you. That's great leadership indeed. <clears throat> John Walters, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to say, um, um, I don't know how the other CUDs are doing it without a Jeremy. And I'm awfully, <laughs> I'm awfully glad we didn't have to find out. Uh, that's, that's, that's great. Uh, Henry, I see your hands up. Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask Jeremy one question. What, what, um, is your research project going to be that you're going to go back to? 
with all your free time. Uh, which one? I mean, I've got I've got two or two or three different projects. Uh, one, uh, one I was telling Ray about this earlier today. Uh, one is actually about using organizations like CUDs, pub, special municipal districts, for um, whatever for for stuff. I can I can share it with you when when I'm done. I'll I'll share it widely. But and then I've got some stuff in crypto and some stuff in election security. Who is it with the phone number five nine seven five? That's our. That's, oh, that's me. Oh, okay, okay. That's our right. I, 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 I check in with video and audio on my phone. Our, our team, we got fifty. We got fifty-five minutes left. If you want to take up some more time. <laughs> and is, <laughs> is there anybody that that wants to say something that hasn't had the opportunity yet? I I think I've run through the list, but I'm not a hundred percent certain. I'd like to speak. Yes, who is that, please? Linda. Linda. Go ahead, Linda. I, I work with a lot of uh, organizations that are run by volunteers, but I've never seen the dedication in those that I see here. You guys are all really hard workers. That's how you got where we are right now. It is a pleasure to be among you, and I've learned so much in short time from you. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for all the work you did to get us here. And I want to thank Jerry for stepping up because we really need you now. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you, Linda. Well, if if is is there Henry? I see your hand is up again, or is that a residual? Uh, residual. Okay. Well, I think at 7.06. Uh, does, does Jeremy have some last words? That's a good idea, Ray. Thank you. <laughs> thanks for that. Um, no, not, not really. As, aside from, you know, thank you all. And thanks again, Jerry, for uh, for taking it from here. Um, I, I will stay involved. I am going to be here. It's not like, um, you know, I'm disappearing, but... Uh, well, I'm not going to see fiber anytime soon. I'm going to be super excited, and I and I definitely I definitely want to be at the at the the kickoff ribbon cutting whatever when we yes. you know connect the first person whichever whatever address that happens to be. Absolutely, absolutely. Anybody want to make a motion to adjourn? Is that so move appropriate? Second. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> uh, real quick question, actually, for Jonathan Williams outside of the meeting. Um, are you now the official uh, delegate for Barry City or are you the alternate or what is your status? Um, sure, Jeremy. There's been no formal motion, but in lieu of us having a uh, appointed uh, delegate or alternate besides myself, I am the de facto delegate to the <laughs> okay group, so fair enough okay Thank you. sounds good let me know if that changes thanks all, all right, right everyone good night, everyone thank you we bye. uh see you real soon yeah bye 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 all